ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुरी So you see all these people from all over the world and they all thought I'll go to London and I'll go to Oxford Street and then I'll be happy. And you see them they're all completely full of anxiety. Then you hear ching 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 ching. And you look what is that? And there's a cloud of light coming through the darkness. The devotees are chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare. The devotees are so effulgent and so blissful. All the people they spend so much money to come to England, and the devotees they're coming. They don't have any money. They're just simple sadhus. They're chanting Hari Krishna and they're blissful. People notice. They used to say to Prabhupada, "How is it that your disciples are so bright-faced?" The devotee is supposed to be bright-faced. Prabhupada said that one fashion, shaved head, tilak, dhoti. That is our fashion. And the Mataji sari and tilak and no shaved head <laughs> and bright face. Every devotee should be like a 300 watt bulb. So if you don't feel like a 300 watt bulb, chant Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram Hari Hari, and eat some gulab jamun. Uh, he doesn't want to translate because he's the <laughs> president. He's afraid. Now they'll all demand gulab jamun. <laughs> He's translating, but don't eat too many gulab jamun. That's also true, because you have to go out in the streets and chant Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. You have to bring people back to the temple and feed them prasadam. So this is our service to spread the sankirtan all over the world. Bhakti Nod Thakur, he says, I want to hear the sound of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's madanga sankirtan with my own ears. So we can also, Bhakti Nod Thakur is teaching us. We can also join in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sankirtan party. Throughout our lives, we'll chant Hare Krishna and take prasad and dance. Then yam yam vapi sram bhavam tyajam tyam de kale varam tam tam evaiti kanta ya sadatad bhava bhavita. Whatever we think of at the time of death, that makes our new body. At the time of death, all our life we see quickly in a flash. So in our life, we should put in plenty of chanting, plenty of dancing. Plenty of prasadam and plenty of preaching, so that at the time of death we can think of Krishna. Whatever thought that at the time of death, so many all our life comes in front of us. Whatever thought attracts us, that we go to our next body. So we should fix our thoughts on Krishna. Uh, that we should have plenty of kirtan, so that at the time of death we become attracted by the sound of kirtan. Dekhiye, dekhiye, Shili la Madhuri, Bashibo Prema Rabbani. So he wants, he wants to see how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's beautiful pastimes drown the whole world in love of Krishna. Na dekhi abar, Shili la Ratan, Kandi ha Goranga Bali. Then, again, not seeing that that jewel-like pastimes, I will cry and call out, Ha Goranga, Ha Goranga, Ha Goranga. Amare bishoyi pagala bolia angati dibeka dhuli. Then he says that all materialistic people will think I'm completely mad and they will throw dirt on me. And that's the end of the song. So he's not saying that uh, we should adjust ourselves so that all the materialistic people will think Hare Krishna is very nice. He's saying we should go on with our Krishna consciousness. And if the materialistic people throw dirt on us, what to do? We cannot give up our Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada was asked sometimes about this uh, public opinion, how we should adjust ourselves for the sake of public opinion. Mm-hmm. Prabhupada said, th- the way we can have good public opinion is this: we should adjust all the public to be like us, then there'll be good public opinion. Not that we adjust ourselves to become like the public. Oh, you don't let your children watch television. You're so cruel to them. Mm-hmm. All right, give them a television. Oh, you shave your children's head, and you don't teach them Darwin's theory. You don't teach them Darwin's theory. All right, so we we should teach our children Darwin's theory because public opinion. My dear child, I am your father, and he is my father. He is your grandfather, and his grandfather was a monkey. You should teach your children. 
And then all the materialistic people will say, oh, very good, very intelligent, very scientific, that my great-great-grandfather was a monkey. And then the people will say, yes, Hare Krishna is very good. <coughs> then normal people, all their great-grandfathers were monkeys like us. We're not going to teach Darwin's theory. Darwin, he made a mistake. He thought his grandfather was a monkey. But he was so sure that he was correct, that my grandfather was a monkey, that he taught it to the whole world. And he gave scientific evidence. You see, a tortoise has two legs, like this. The tortoise. And we have two arms. So the conclusion is that our grandfather was a monkey. Very scientific. All the people say, oh, that's very good. That's a very good theory. Now we don't need God anymore. We have automatic bread factories, so what do we need God for anymore? And we have our planes flying in the sky, they go above the clouds. Our airplanes fly in the yeah. sky, they go above the clouds. Can you repeat? The, the, we, our airplanes, yeah. they go in the sky, above the clouds. Ah. And we didn't see any old men sitting in the clouds, <laughs> cooking bread. So that proves there's no God. And we got even more proof when, who was that, Yuri Gagarin went into space. And he said, I went into space and I didn't see any God. Because some people were thinking, well, maybe when God saw the airplane coming, he moved his bread factory into outer space. <laughs> <laughs> all the angels are busy mixing the bread, all the flour with water. But, but Yuri, Yuri Gagarin went into space and saw, I didn't see any God, no bread, no angels, there's no God. So, the, so it's scientifically proved that our grandfather was a monkey. So this is science and we should teach our children. And then everyone will like us. And they'll say the Hare Krishnas, they are rational, sane human beings. Because they also descended from monkeys. So we're not going to teach this to our children. If they want to teach that they descended from monkeys, let them. But we know we descended from Manu. Manu, he is the head of all the men. And he is the son of Brahma. Brahma is the son of Krishna. So we are children of God. God is not only one son. He is, we are all children of God. So this is the proper understanding of God. It is our duty to give that knowledge of God to others. It is very difficult because people have very funny ideas. They think we should be kind to animals by keeping dogs in our house and slaughtering cows. Sometimes they say we should kill children and that will be kind to them. Do they not say that? They say, well, now now a lady is pregnant. I already have three children. So if I have one more, I won't be able to look after properly. So to be very kind to the child, we should have an abortion. This they rationalize. We should kill the children in the womb. And so many sinful, wrong ideas they have. If someone chants Hare Krishna in the street, there's something wrong with him. But if he drinks alcohol and falls down unconscious in the street, then he's a normal human being. So they're all crazy people. We may not say it very publicly, but at least we should know they're all crazy. Anyone who's not Krishna conscious is insane. The proof is that they're descended from monkeys. They say they're descended from so many proofs. Everything they do is proof. Their whole life is spent uselessly. They think if I can get some money and little uh, apartment and a nice wife and a dog, then my life is successful. And if I can get an old BMW rejected from Germany, then my life is even more successful. If I can get an old BMW rejected from Germany, then my life is even more successful. So real intelligence means to understand who is Garnitai and serve their lotus feet by spreading this chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So now the RT is going on. So that we should understand why we should go on to So any questions? Somewhere there is a prayer of the two devotees of the Lord uh, where it is said, <coughs> I will not uh, study uh, any <coughs> Vedas, I will not study any Puranas, let them uh, be studied by others. I will only worship uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj in, in, uh, which, in uh, his house uh, Krishna was born. Mm. Can you uh, comment on this? Yes, Let's quote it in Chaitanya Charitamrita. No, what is that? How is that? Does it go? The last line I remember. Yes, Yalinge Purandam. It says that uh, some people they have great regard for the Mahabharat, and some have great regard for different parts of the Vedas. 
that this devotee prays, as far as I'm concerned, I have great regard for Nanda Maharaj. I shall worship him. Mm-hmm. Because in his courtyard, his supreme absolute truth is playing like an ordinary child. So all the Shastras, they're meant for understanding. Krishna. All the Vedas are meant for knowing Krishna. But many so-called Vedic schools, they read the Vedas, but they don't understand Krishna. It's difficult to understand Krishna. Vedeshudra Labham is difficult to understand Krishna simply from the Vedas. Uh, many people, without the guidance of a pure devotee Acharya, you may be confused. So there are many different <coughs> schools of Vedic thought which explain the Vedas in their own way and completely <coughs> miss the point which is to surrender to Krishna. So you get all these different schools like Nyai, Vaisheshika, Kamavimangsha, all these different schools of thought. They'll discuss all these different, all the different parts of the Vedas and they come to completely wrong conclusions. Just like Kamavimangsha, their conclusion is that the purpose of life, quoting the Vedas, they say the purpose of life is to enjoy sense gratification. They don't only quote the Vedas, they have a whole complex system of philosophy. But it's all nonsense. Vedic nonsense. Actually, Vedic cannot be nonsense because Ved means knowledge. Quoting the Vedas, they're talking all nonsense. So, uh, this pure devotee is saying that all these different people, all they're discussing though, so many different parts of the Shastra, but they're missing the point, which is Krishna. Therefore, I worship Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj is not known as a great Vedic scholar. But in his courtyard is Krishna plain. Therefore, he has gone beyond all the conclusions of the scriptures. Another point is that scriptures, they are various. And just like Mahabharat, of course, Krishna is there. But there's so much discussion of politics, sociology, morality, and so many nonsense things. And in different Puranas also, some will say, well, worship Ganesh. Others will say, worship Shiva. That's why we find that, or they'll say, practice yoga, or do karma, or jnana. That's why we find at the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, Narad meeting Vyasadeva and chastising him. Jugupshitam, he says, you, you, what you have done is abominable, it's not so good. You have made so many scriptures, but in none of them have you directly and wholly and solely glorified the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Therefore, on Narad's order, Srila Vyasadev compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essence of all the scriptures. Dharma Projita, Dharma Projita Koitava Atra. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, all cheating system of religion is kicked out, completely rejected. There's, there's no recommendation to stand on your head. There's no recommendation to go to the moon. There's no recommendation to speculate and say that everything is coming from atoms. There's no recommendation to do anything but to fully surrender at the lotus feet of Krishna. Throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam, we find this same theme repeated strongly again and again. Just like Prahlad Maharaj, his father asked, Hiranyaka Shipu, the great demon, asked, what is the best thing that you have learned from your teachers? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atman, Ivedanam, Iti Pung, Sharpito, Vishnu, Bhaktis, Chain, Navalakshana. He said that these hearing about Krishna, chanting about Krishna, remembering Krishna, worshipping Krishna, offering prayers to Krishna, becoming the servant of Krishna, becoming the friend of Krishna, and surrendering everything to Krishna, this is the best thing to learn for everybody. Throughout the Bhagavatam, very strongly, only Krishna consciousness is recommended. Pure devotional service. So, dharma projita kaitava atra paramaniya matsaranam satam vedyam vastavam atra vastu shivadam tapatrayan mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parai Vishvara Sadhya Hridya Vridhya Tetra Kriti Vishushu Shrish Takshanat. This verse describes why we only need to study Srimad Bhagavata. Kimba Parai, what need is there of studying all these so many different books? Everything is there in Bhagavatam. Vedya Mastavam, this is the reality, this is the essence of the Vedas. So there's no need of discussing, well, this Purana says this, that Purana says that. Just we can study Srimad Bhagavatam and worship Nanda Maharaj. Now we may 
also study other shastras. Especially our acharyas do that for the sake of establishing religious principles within the world. Nana shastra vichara naika nipuno sadharma samsthapako lokanam hitakari no chibhuvane manyosharanyakaro. This is the position of the six Goswamis. They were always uh, studying the different scriptures with the aim of establishing real religious principles. The six Goswamis were not interested in studying all the scriptures and coming to the conclusion that we should enjoy sense gratification like the Karma Memang. So because they know the purpose of the scriptures, therefore they can explain the scriptures properly. But anyway, uh, unless we are acharyas who have to write books for the sake of convincing foolish people like Karma Mimangsaks, then Kim Vaparayishra. Then we can stick only to Srimad Bhagavatam. Four books are enough. Prabhupada wrote in the purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita, four books are sufficient for understanding Krishna consciousness and preaching all over the world. So, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Nectar of Devotion and Teachings of Lord Chaitanya or Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Nectar of Devotion. So, Bhagavad Gita, that is the essence of all the Upanishads. Srila Vyasa Dev, he compiled all the Vedic literatures with all knowledge of all different things, material and spiritual. But the real purpose of the Vedas is to enlighten us, to give us spiritual knowledge. So that spiritual knowledge he compiled in the Upanishads. Often the Upanishads, they're also very difficult to understand. And uh, within the Upanishads also, there are different levels of understanding. So, Sri Krishna himself personally brought all the essence of the Upanishads. So he spoke that in Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Upanishad Gavo Dogda Gopala Nandana Then, Bhukta Vatsa Sudhir Partha Bhukta Vatsa Sudhir Partha Then, Dogdam I am not remembering now. Dogdam Gitam Raham Mahat says that Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all the Upanishads, just like a cow. Bhagavad Gita is compared to a cow, which is the essence of all the Upanishads. And the cowherd boy who is extracting the milk is Krishna. Because a cow eats grass here, there, all different places. And then gives all the value of the grass in the milk. So Krishna is extracting the milk means he is taking the essence of the Vedas. He is bringing it out of the Vedas. So, Vatsa Parta and Arjuna in this example is like a calf because the calf first drinks the milk. Then, uh, Sudhira Bhogta. But by, by God's arrangement, the cow gives enough milk so the calf can take some and human beings can also take other, some milk. Mm-hmm. Vatsa Parta, Sudhira Bhogta. Those who are very uh, steady, cool-headed philosophers they also enjoy the milk of Bhagavad Gita. And Dugdam Gitam Ritam Mahat. And the milk itself is the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. So, Bhagavad Gita, as it is, is received in disciplic succession. Devam yeah. Parampara Praptam. In the disciplic succession. Which disciplic succession? Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Evam Vivasvate Yogam Proktavanaham Avyayam Vivasvan Manave Praho Manur Ikshvakave Bravid Evam parampara parampara praptam imang raja shriyavidu. In this disciplic succession, Krishna spoke to the sun god, the spoke, sun god spoke to his son Ikshvakus, the sun god spoke uh, to Manu, and Manu spoke to Ikshvaku. Manu, no. Imang Vivasvate Yogam Protavana Vivasvam Manave Praha. Vivasvam to Manu and Manu to Ikshvaku. Uh, this way it was disseminated in human society. So in the bona fide parampara coming from Krishna, we get Bhagavad Gita as it is. And other people may be teaching Bhagavad Gita as it is not. That is not Bhagavad Gita. It's like saying, I'm going to give you a glass of milk, but it's not milk. Just like you can buy this orange drink. So when you buy it, you think you're buying orange juice. But then you get home and you see on the packet it says 95% sugar and 1% orange juice and... 4% 4% chemicals with some water. <laughs> so it looks like orange juice from the outside of the packet because they put all oranges on the... The only orange is in the picture in the cover. And there may be 1% apelsinus inside just so that they cannot be prosecuted by law. Not so, the same way people are presenting Bhagavad Gita as it is not. So it looks like Bhagavad Gita. And there might be 1% of something truth in there. 
but it's mostly all nonsense. So it's not Bhagavad Gita at all. Only the label is there, Bhagavad Gita. But inside, when you open, it's not Bhagavad Gita. And so they may also have their parampara. But it's not this parampara. It's parampara of foolish idiots, and rascals and demons, who are very carefully explaining Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita means there is no such person as Krishna who we should surrender to. I understood. Uh-huh. So we should not read books by non-devotees because non-devotee means they're all envious of Krishna and they have the audacity to try to explain that Bhagavad Gita means that we shouldn't surrender to Krishna. The only thing Krishna is explaining in Bhagavad Gita is to surrender to him. This is the subject matter of Bhagavad Gita. But the demons, they will, in the name of Bhagavad Gita, they will tell you one different, one million different meanings but they will never, never, never say that you shall surrender to Krishna. So we should read Bhagavad Gita as it is, which is the essence of all the Vedas. The essence of the Vedas is Upanishads, the essence of the Upanishads is Bhagavad Gita, and Bhagavad Gita as it is, is written by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder of Acharya of Iskon, and translated in all the languages of the world and distributed. So the Upanishads, they were also condensed in a different form by Vyasadeva himself in the form of the Vedanta Sutra. And because Vedanta Sutra is extremely concise, therefore Vyasadeva gave his own commentary on Vedanta Sutra called Srimad Bhagavatam. And what is explained in Bhagavad Gita in very uh, simple, concise form is explained elaborately in Srimad Bhagavatam. What is the teaching of Srimad Bhagavatam? Krishna's two Bhagavan Swam. That is explained also in Srimad in Bhagavad Gita. All the essential points are there in Bhagavad Gita as it is. Why is Krishna Bhagavan? Aham sarvasya prabhavo matah sarvam prabhatate. Everything emanates from me. Everything comes from me. Maya dhyakshena prakriti suyate sachara taram. Uh, all, all the material nature is going on under my control. Aham hi sarva yagyanam bhukta cha prabhaeva cha. I am the uh, enjoyer and control, the master of all different sacrifices. So in, in so many different ways it's established how Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead in Bhagavad Gita. And the rascals, they want to explain not Krishna in Bhagavad, from Bhagavad Gita. So, the same points in Bhagavad Gita uh, that Krishna gives are explained elaborately in Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna says, everything emanates from me in Bhagavad Gita. Then in great detail, that is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. How Krishna creates, maintains and destroys the cosmic manifestation. You don't have to come across the universe. I could discuss. Shota Vyadini Rajendra Nunang Santi Sahasrashaha Apashatam Atmatatvam Griheshu Grihamedinam. Outside this building, there are many other discussions going on. Many different discussions about all kinds of useless things. All grouped under four categories. Ahar Nidra Bhaya Maitunam Cha. Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. All material life can be, you can divide everything in four categories. Eating, sleeping, mating and defending. Sometimes we think, oh, this is very interesting. There's nothing very interesting. Just different permutations and combinations of eating, sleeping, mating and defending. People think this is very interesting. And they discuss in all different kinds of details. Sociology, politics, history, science, passions. There's another fashion. It's a new idea, fashion. Prabhupada said in our Krishna conscious movement we have one fashion. Shaved head and tilak. We want to teach all the fashionable people of the world this fashion. Foolish people, they change clothes every few days. You see, one time they dress with their hair like this. Then after three months someone says, no, we should do like this. So everybody goes like this. Sometimes they say you should wear a skirt up to here, sometimes up to here, and sometimes up to here. So even though they already have, they already have 20 skirts in their wardrobe, but because they're all out of fashion, they have to buy a new one. In this way, they spoil their life simply buying more and more clothes. Because they are apashyatam atnatatvam. They don't see what is the real value of life. And griheshu grihamedhinam. Dedicated animals tied to the post. Dedicated animals tied to the post. Animal is tied to a post. Grihamedhi means... Yeah. To a post. So such people, they will never be interested in Krishna consciousness. Their tendency towards Krishna will not be awakened, either by their own mental speculations, 
or by the endeavors of others or by discussing with other mental speculators. They are simply dedicated towards going to hell because of their uncontrolled senses. Therefore they again and again chew that which has already been chewed. Chewing the chewed, as the saying goes. You know, I don't think you have that here, but in India, of course, you see the sugar cane is all, they squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. They put it through the machine and all the juice comes out. And then they double it up and fold it up again and they put it through the machine and with great effort they squeeze out a few last drops. Then again they fold it and again with great effort they put it through the machine and just get one last drop. Then they throw it on the ground and a cow comes and looks and starts chewing it. There's no juice, nothing. But they're in hope there may be some juice. They, they, they know that in sugar cane there is juice so they're seeing well maybe there might be some juice. So material life means no juice. Everyone knows there's no juice. But still they're trying to get juice out of material life because they don't know any other idea how to get juice. They don't know the goal of life is Krishna. Therefore they're hoping against hope that they can be happy in material life. Just like the cow knows there's no juice because he's been in the, this cow has been in the same position has seen this dried up sugar cane so many times. But still they're hoping that maybe sometime I can get some juice out of the dried up sugar cane. But they mm -hmm. never do. So the duty of Krishna consciousness devotees is to give juice to the people who are drying up. Give them gulabjamans. Gulabjaman is the medicine for knocking out maya. Krishna yeah. prasad of gulabjaman. have to offer it to Krishna first. Let them hear the holy names of Krishna and drop some bombs in their hands. Gulabjaman is the bullet and Prabhupada's books are the bombs. And these are for smashing material life. They're very dangerous books. Because the thing that people have been dedicated to for millions and millions of years since gratification, just by reading Prabhupada's books once, so many people they feel, now I want to leave it. Those who are dedicated materialists, they know that these books are very dangerous. I think all the book distributors had the experience there showing the book to some young man and he's looking at it with a little interest yeah. and all of a sudden his girlfriend comes and grabs him by the arm and without discussing with him she tells you we don't want these books pulls him away possibly see they have an instinct this is something very dangerous if he buys these books I'll lose my boyfriend so people they can understand that these books are powerful mm. actually they are powerful this knowledge goes through so deep layers of ignorance. We are eternal servants of Krishna, but our Krishna consciousness is like this, and it's covered by thick, thick, thick layers of ignorance. But because these books are non-different from Krishna, and because they're presented by an empowered pure devotee of Krishna, when people read these books, it just cut, cuts like a laser beam right through the ignorance and reaches to the soul. People read, we are not these bodies. We are eternal spirit soul, servant of Krishna. And deep down inside something goes, ah, yes. Especially those people who have executed some Krishna consciousness in previous lifetimes. Now they forgot Krishna. And they see, ah, Krishna, yes. Yes, I, I must find out about Krishna. Then they become crazy people at least according to materialistic civilization's idea. See, here's a man, he's living at home, he's doing his job, he's going to the office, he's a nice, normal, Lithuanian gentleman. Then, he gets this book and he becomes crazy. He doesn't want to watch television anymore. Yes. That's a certain sign of complete insanity. According to the materialists, if you don't watch television at least four or five hours a day, there's something wrong with you. It Not only you lose interest in all the normal things of life, and you become interested in something which we never heard of before. It's very difficult for materialistic people to understand what is this Krishna consciousness. Their idea of religion is you go to church, you pray, you get some blessing from God, you dump all your sins in the church and you come back. Dear Father, I committed so many sins. Okay, don't do it again. And again next week, Father, I did it again. Okay, never mind, don't do it again. His mantra, I bless you, you're free from your sins, don't do it again. And their idea of God, what is their idea of God? They want to see God as an ugly old man. Have you seen that picture, Michelangelo, Sistine Chapel? They have a picture of God as an old man. They think God created the world, that was a long time ago, so by now, if he didn't die already, he must be looking very old, with a big long white beard. 
with a big long yeah. white beard. He has yeah. a big beard because they yeah. don't make uh, any Gillette shaving cream in heaven yet. <laughs> so his beard grew very long. Yeah. In heaven, it's still primitive. They don't have factories or motor cars, so they just fly from cloud to cloud. Yeah. They don't have anything else to do. So they have no idea who is God. And then they they may think, well, if I go to heaven after some time, maybe I'll have a long beard too. I'll be all ugly and old. I have to remember to bring a few cans of shaving cream with me. Because, I, anyway, what is there to do in heaven? Just sitting on a cloud and then singing sometime and going to sleep. They have no idea who is God. Who is God? He doesn't have a long beard. He has a flute. Why a flute? Because he's a cowherd boy. And cowherd boys, they call the cows with a flute. And he likes to play on a flute. He's God. He can do whatever he likes. Yeah. And what does he look like? Is he old? No. Aravinda Dalaya Taksha. His eyes are just like blooming lotus petal. And Barhava Tamsam. He's decorated with peacock feather. Asitam Buddha Sundarangam. His bodily features are dark like a like a monsoon cloud and very beautiful. And he's so beautiful that he's attracting millions and millions of cupids. Why should he be ugly? How can they think God is ugly? What's the meaning of being God if you can't even stop your cheeks hanging down like this? Krishna Conscious Road is giving the real idea of God. They want to think, well, maybe Krishna Conscious is some kind of religion. But it's not just another religion. That some, their idea of religion is you believe something, whatever you like. But this is real knowledge of God. Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam, scientific knowledge of God. Who is God? Simply they're giving God. But who is God, they don't know. But we know. We know his name. His name is Krishna. If you say God, it's just like saying Prime Minister, something like that. That is his position. But who is he? What does he like? What is our relationship with him? Is it simply give me bread? And God is simply a baker, that's all he is. A baker, you know, people who bake bread? Aye. God has no other duty than to come round and give you bread. Here, bread. Give bread. What about the butter and the milk and the jam? All he can do is give you bread. That's the only function of God. Hey, God, give me some bread. Okay, go back to sleep again. I'll call you again tomorrow. God, give me some bread. No, we're supposed to feed Krishna. And not only bread. Many, many things. Shukta shakadi bhaji nalita kushmanda dali dalna dugda tumbi dhoti mocha kanda. So many things. Pita panna. So many. what are those things? Dali dalna dugda tumbi dhoti mocha. So many things are described. Yes. Sour vegetables, leafy vegetables, soups, cakes, chapatis, rice. With so many different things are described. And that's Krishna's breakfast. That's there's that description is given. Bhakti Otako song. That's Krishna's breakfast. God is the supreme enjoyer. He's not simply giving us some bread. That's all his job. He's sitting on a cloud with a long beard, <laughs> cooking bread. <laughs> and sometimes he puts some in the direction of hell, and there's a lot of fire coming from hell, so you can get toast. So God is more than a transcendental bread maker. So Krishna consciousness movement is to give real knowledge of God. But only those who are very fortunate, they can understand. They think, what are these Hare Krishna people? Singing and dancing in the streets. Why don't they do something useful? They don't know what is the usefulness of this chanting Hare Krishna. One time someone asked Prabhupada, Swamiji, what is the use of this chanting Hare Krishna? Prabhupada said, it stops, it saves you from death. So they don't know. They think it's just some funny thing we're doing. But we are saving them from death. Not we are saving, Krishna is saving by his manifestation as the holy name. So yeah. we are so fortunate to get the chance to chant Hare Krishna and serve Krishna in this way. So we are all here to speak about Krishna. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is here. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he asked everybody, you only speak about Krishna. Yadi yama pratishneho take shabaka tobe krishna beti rikto nagai baya. One time, because of course everybody loved Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all his devotees. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, if you actually love me, then you please do one thing. Don't speak about anything but Krishna. Kishayane ki bojane ki ba jagarane aharam nishat chinta krishna balohabadane. Whether you are awake or going to sleep or eating or day or night, whatever situation, always think of Krishna and chant his holy names. Kayati shuti jata tata nama loi desh kal niyam nahi sarva siddhi hoi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, 
even while eating, even while sleeping, in any situation, without any consideration of time, place or circumstance. If you chant the holy names of Krishna, you can achieve all perfection. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Prabhu kahe kahi lam e maha mantra, yaha japa gya shabe kariya nibandha, yaha huite sarva shiddhi huive shabha, sarva kam kahanam vidina hiya. Chaitanya Mahabhu said, this is the Hare Krishna maha mantra. Prabhu kahe kahi lam e maha mantra, everyone should chant this following the rules and regulations. Just by doing this, everyone can achieve all perfection. So just chant Hare Krishna. This is the essence of all the rules and regulations. So we are here to discuss about Krishna, to become purified ourselves, to purify the atmosphere of yet another Kali Yuga city, Kaunas in this case, so that our faith in Krishna may be increased, so that our love for Krishna may be developed, and so that our enthusiasm to preach this Krishna conscious movement may increase more and more and more. So, are we going to read this song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur? A hundred years ago there was no such place as Konas. And most probably after some time there will be again no city here. And what we're taking as real, that is all temporary. We're taking as reality my apartment in Konas. We're taking as reality my apartment in Konas. Oh. That is all anitto, temporary. That will not stay. Therefore, that is not of the nature of reality. We are not these bodies. We are definitely not these bodies. Yeah. Even though we are convinced that we are these bodies, we are not these bodies. Uh, we are eternal spirit soul, and our eternal position is to serve Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. So this is reality. And what's in the newspaper and what's happening in my small little life in Konas, that is not reality. Of course, those who are serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Konas, they have entered the atmosphere of reality. They are living in Vaikuntha. Vigata Kunta iti Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means no more anxiety. This, when we come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet, then no more anxiety. Because Nitai Pada Kamala Koti Chandra Shushitala Jai Chayai Jagata Durai the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda or Lord Chaitanya, they are cooling like millions of moons and they give shelter to the whole world. This is reality. By studying Prabhupada's books, we become absorbed in reality. Reality means the world beyond this material world. This material world is created and annihilated again and again. In very long time period, millions, billions, trillions of years, that is simply the breathing period of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is simply an expansion of an expansion of an expansion of Balaram who is Nityananda. So this is reality, chanting Hare Krishna. This is eternal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, their eternal pastime is to chant Hare Krishna. So our eternal position is to follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda in chanting Hare Krishna. Radha Krishna Bol Bol Bolo Re Shobhai E Shikha Diya Shabna Diya Firche Neche Gaurinita Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were dancing and dancing, turning round and round, going all over Nadia, just telling everybody, chant Hare Krishna, chant Radha Krishna. This is reality. Yes, we should have firm faith. Firm faith means study Prabhupada's books very carefully, and all understanding will come. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur is praying, when will I get the mercy of, when my, my Guru will show his mercy to me, then Hare Hare Boli, I will be chanting Hare Krishna and wandering in the groves of Godrum, Navadip, hoping for, he's wondering, he's praying, when will I get the mercy that I will wander like that, chanting Hare Krishna, and have direct darshan of Nityananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Navadip. So that was Bhaktinod Thakur's service. He is a great Acharya and great Guru, therefore he had a great service to do on behalf of Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. To re-establish the importance of Mayapur, to re-establish the importance of Gaurya Vaishnavism. So many wonderful things Bhaktivinoda Thakur did. He wrote so many books about Krishna consciousness. He wrote all these, so many songs which we are now able to take advantage of. And he gave birth to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Gosai Maharaj Prabhupada. That is also a great service. Householders are going to be householders. They should give birth to children 
who will be great preachers and go all over the world and teach people to chant Hare Krishna. We see in Bhagavatam that all the, the, the parents of the avatars, they always pray that uh, you please give us the chance that you will take birth as our son. Bhaktino Thakur also prayed that a ray of Vishnu or a great personality may come to help with the preaching work. So householders should also pray to Krishna, you please send a great personality who we will be ble- who will bless our family and who will spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Household life is not meant for begetting children like cats and dogs. But those who are devotees in Krishna consciousness, who know the importance of Krishna consciousness, who are servants of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, they utilize their sex life to bring forth a great child. That sex life is praised by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Dhamo viruddho bhute ushu kamo smi bharata shabha. Krishna says that sex life, which is not against religious principles, which is meant for bringing forth great children, that I am. So Bhagavad Gita did so many great services for Krishna, therefore he is known as a Paramahamsa Acharya. Even though he was in householder life, he was better than hundreds and thousands of sannyasis. And his service was to, uh, one of his great services was to re-establish the importance of Mayapadham. So he is praying to his guru for the mercy to do that. So we may also pray to our guru to serve Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the way that he has ordained for us. Bhakti Thakur is praying to see Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the land of Navadip. But if we serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu according to the order of Guru, we can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here in Kaunas. We are seeing now. And if we go on more and more, we will see his Leela more and more. We will understand that the activities of the Sankirtan movement, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela. Wherever we are, if we sincerely ch- serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially by preaching, we can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is guaranteed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in South India, one Brahmana, he wanted to go with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, no, stay here, preach. Make your, make your own country Krishna conscious. Jare dekho tare kaha Krishna upadesh amaragga gu haya taro edesh. You simply, in your own area, wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. And in this way you become a guru and deliver the land. But the Brahmana was saying, no, there's too many problems in family life and Maya is so strong. Chaitanya yeah. Mahaprabhu told him, Kabhuna badhi deito maya bishoi taranga punarapi eithai pabe morishonga. He says, you don't worry. If you follow my order, if you follow this order, then maya will not impede you. And you will meet me again at this place. So those who become very deeply absorbed in the activities of the Sankirtan movement, they see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is with me. Then, Nitai Goranga Adeta Srivash Gadadha Panchajan Krishna Nama Roshe Bhasha Bejagat Kali Maha Shankirtan. This is Bhakti Rautako's desire. He wants to see how the Panchatattva are drowning the world in the ecstasy of Sankirtan, Krishna Nam Rosh, the taste, the, the nectar of Krishna's holy names. Naratan Vilash, Vidanga Bhadan, Shiniro Apana Kane, Dekia Dekia, Shilila Madhuri, Bhashibo, Premier Abane. So this is his desire. He wants to see how 